Hi, I'm Todd Clevenger and I'm here with Scott Morrison. We're going to take a, take a little visit with Scott and talk about how he makes his living as a furniture maker building Sam Maloof style uh, inspired furniture and I'll talk about his shop and his background. And uh, Scott, I uh, want to thank you for having me out today. Nice I know the guys are really curious <laughs> as to, uh, uh, they're always interested in seeing a peek inside yeah. somebody's world like you. Uh, you've been building Sam Maloof inspired furniture. Uh, the influence is pretty obvious. And what I'd like to find out, how long have you been doing this? And uh, uh, well, let's start out. How long have you been building furniture, making a living with that? Um, well, woodworking in general, I've been doing it for my entire life. When I was you know, just hold, old enough to hold a hammer, I would work in my father's workshop down in the basement. And I think most woodworkers start out that way. You just you fall in love with it yeah. from somebody who introduced it to you. Mine happened to be my dad, and he was introduced by his dad. Um, but I kind of grew up with, as most woodworkers, doing that as a hobby more so than, than an actual pro profession. Yeah. After I kind of summary retired from the technical field, I decided, my wife and I decided, okay, we're now empty nesters. What do you want to do? <laughs> wow. So we had like an open book. Yeah. And I have some experience in business, and I said, you know what, my love has always been woodworking. Wouldn't it be great if we could uh, stop, you know, get out of the rat race and do this full time as a living? That was about 10 years ago. And um, I started building the chairs specifically, you know, 10 years or so ago, and started to make a, a living at it soon afterwards. I was, I was profitable, I would say, you know, year two. Um, really? Yeah. So that's pretty exceptional, isn't it? I don't really know. I really have nothing to draw from to say whether that's, you know, the exception to the rule or whether that was standard. I, I don't really know. Um, but then again, <clears throat> When I say profitable, it was not a very big profit right. <laughs> at the beginning. That's all relative. It's all relative. So, you yeah. know, I made it made 10 bucks. You know, I don't really yeah. know. Yeah. But I was profitable. I was not able to make a living at it yeah. until a few year, years even after that. The problem is I grossly underestimated how much income it would take oh, really? to sustain and also to start a business like this. Because right. there's not only, you know, the shop and the, the, the tools and the, the materials and the you know, advertising, everything. It's just, it's just just a lot of money. So my goal, I mean, my uh, path of profitability was, you know, sporadic. That's what it probably is with most businesses. Right. But now I would say 10 years is about what I've been doing full time this work. Okay. Out of that, the, um, it, it sounds like, did you, did you have a good business plan then when you started? Because if some of that stuff came as <laughs> a surprise, I mean, because, because even with a business plan, there has to be flexibility and there's always unknowns that pop up. Right. So, so, so. So I, I think one of the things here that, that we want to take a look at real quick then is, is, is for the lesson for everybody else is business plans. What, do you, what would you recommend a business plan? Well, here's the thing. Now, I, I have had many businesses in my life. Okay. Many. 90% of them were failures. Oh, really? Absolutely. I and feel better. <laughs> <laughs> the great thing about a failure is you, <coughs> you learn from your, fa your failures. Mm -hmm. You don't really learn from your success stories, yeah. but you build upon your failures, failures to reach the success. So I, I've owned advertising agencies in the past. Uh -huh. I, I've had um, you know, printing companies. I've had, and, and every single one of them was a failure. My first real successful uh, business was a software company that I owned just before I started this. Mm -hmm. I was a co-founder. And the business plan for something like that is drastically different than a business plan for something that, like, you know, woodworking, right. like craftsmanship, basically, for a living. But I consider myself a businessman first. Okay. And foremost. Right. How I achieve my goals of being in business, in this case, happens to be woodworking. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my business plan um, was sort of fluid when it came to doing this. I knew the software side, but I did not know the woodworking side. So... I put down some of the basic business principles in my plan mm -hmm. and then scrapped it <laughs> because, oh, really? because a lot of it went right out the window when you start a business. There are things right. I just didn't anticipate. I just yeah. didn't know. Um, you know, just prototyping and the time it takes to do those kind of things. You know, where software or prototype cycle is much, well, you have a team, first of all, it's right. much shorter. This, I'm, I'm it. Yeah. I'm the guy. Yes. So for every hour that I spend in the workshop, there's an hour of support for that. There's mm -hmm. marketing material, there's, you know, you know, ordering supplies, and there's coordinating schedules, and so on and so forth, building product. It's just a big amount of time that I did not anticipate. So right. my business plan at first was very different than what it became uh, later on, you know, down the road. So now, it's, it's pretty interesting, because actually you get a lot of support from your wife, too, as well, don't you? I do, you know, and I firmly believe I would be nowhere yeah. <laughs> without my wife. 
and I gotta give credit where credit's due. Um, I, all of my designs that you see, I mean, all of my uh, designs that I've taken and kind of made my own, 90% of those are my wife. Was well, this something that <laughs> it's just, hey, I'd like this piece of furniture and she designs it and then you gotta build it? Is well, that well cool? yes, and no, yes and no. I mean, because I know my wife's always want me to build things she, and of course I don't build anything <laughs> for her. I mean, my wife sometimes comes up with these ideas that look like a pretzel and I'm like, I'm like I can't build that, you know, yeah. what the heck? So she has to have some idea of what the limitations are. Oh, okay. <clears throat> she does, and she has a very good idea. She yeah. used to work in the shop with me. I mean, she wouldn't touch the tools. They kind of you know, freaked her out a little yeah. bit. But she would be in the shop watching me do things, and she would see what's possible and what's not. Yeah. And then you, I, I'm also the expert when it comes to you know, the grain. You can't build you know, something that goes like this and expect it to be strong. Yeah. You, know, you, just, you just can't. So what she does is we horse trade. Yeah. She comes up with what she thinks is a great design. I'll come back and say... I could do about half of that. <laughs> oh, okay. So let's figure out a way that we get what we want and yeah. both come up with a good design. Yeah. So then we'll sit down and with her, I will go through this process and it takes sometimes years. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Like my rocker cradle, it took me almost three years to design that. Wow. Because her concept. Now, that, and that, that rocker right. cradle, I've seen that. In yeah. fact, I saw it at the Western Design Conference right. two years ago. Right. And that is your, your design. That's, that's, my original, that's my original design. That is a fabulous piece, Thanks. too. Thank that, is, that is. Now, that was, of course, was, you know, Maloof influenced. Right. And, um, during that show, I'm not sure if it was that, I did the conference twice, but Sam was the judge at one of those shows, and he came to, and saw me at the you know, conference, and we had known each other. Oh, yeah, that was the year. Was I was it? there. Yeah, because okay. I met Sam there. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah. we had known each other. Yeah. And he just loved it. He thought it was great. Really? And him and I and his wife went out to dinner, and we just, you know, kind of chatted each other. Sure, and, sure. He's a big Mexican food fan, so. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the Mexican food. And we just had a great time talking about it, and he had never seen one before. Now, the actual um, design is mine for that particular piece, but the... Concept comes from the 1700s. Right. Actually, I've seen those pieces. They were more of a. Were they more of the Windsor? Well, they were Windsor style. They were called nanny rockers. Yeah. Right? Okay. And they okay. Came, I mean, they were very utilitarian. Where the, the nanny would peel potatoes or whatever while she's rocking in this, you know, yeah. thing. It wouldn't rock the baby at the same time. Mm -hmm. And of course, I was getting ready to be a grandpa for the first time. Okay. And I said, "What a great idea." Yeah. But that was three years too late. <laughs> right. <laughs> the baby came, yeah. and I still didn't have it built. Um, but the. Uh, the actual design and things like that were something my wife and I had traded back and forth yeah. for three years because wow. we couldn't get it right. Wow.